Okay, so here, what I want to do is I want to share with you how I created this flyer all from the comfort of my phone. I mean, how I did this practically from scratch. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to create a new page. And in order to create a new page, all you need to do is if you swipe this way, it's going to create a new page. Now you will observe that the background is kind of automatically transferred. Can you see that? That's because sometimes when you're working with Canva, the background can be transferred. Can be, uh, 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 New pages can inherit properties of the background of a previous page. In fact, they will inherit a lot of qualities from the previous page. So let me show you how I created this, okay? So this is this page here. First thing I want to do is to type mastering your emotions. So this is text here. Now, rather than use some of these bulk, this um, templated text here, I'm simply going to create my own. And I'm going to write mastering, mastering as a word. I'm going to click this, and then I'm going to select my type of font. So you can see here, League Gothic is the font that I'm using. Now this is where you increase size. So you come here, and then you increase size here. You can reduce it, you can increase it. Now, this is what I want here. Now, this A button here allows you to adjust your font. So if you click A, you see it has changed to capital letters. If you turn it off, it's going to remain the way it was. So this is this font here. Now, if you create a world, what I'm going to then do is I'm going to duplicate this text. So you see it here. And then this time around, I'm going to simply write your emotions. Now you can see it's already I'm stripping it into two lines. What do I need to do? Simple, draw it out like this and then increase the size. Can you see that? So I'm going to bring this here now. Can you see that? And then let me now bring in a picture with a background, without a background. Now, in order to bring in a picture without a background, what I will simply do is I'm going to go to remove.bg in a browser. So let me find a browser here. So I'm going to type remove.bg and then I'm simply going to that site. So here, I'm simply going to click Upload Image. And it's going to ask me to go find image from my device. Now, what I usually like to do is I like to use Browse because that way I can go to where the folder is. So now I'm going to go to where the folder is. And the folder I'm looking for is Jolla. I think that should be the name of that folder, Jolla. If I am correct. That should be the name of that folder. That should be Jola. Where is Jola? Where can I find Jola? Here. Okay, in case I can't find it, let me check this CIM. Okay, good. So this is Jola here. Where is it again? I saw Jola just now. Okay, this is Jola here. Now, I'm going to use this picture here, this one with my hand. And look at what's going to happen. It's going to take off the background. Okay, so now it appears the the picture has now been uploaded and uh, the background has been removed. Now, if you happen to see that your picture is not properly uploaded or it's not properly edited, the background is not properly removed, what you can do is to click on this edit button. This edit button here, this edit button that you can see here, that's what you click in order to take that out. So I'm going to... I'm going to hide that and then I'm simply going to do what you then do afterwards is simply click download. Now, once you click on download, it's going to download to your, to your um, phone. Now, before you download, if you choose, you can actually click on this button here and you can choose full image download. So if you choose full image download, it's going to download a bigger 
higher resolution quality of your picture. So I'm going to click full image download now. And you'll see, you see, this one is up to 25 megapixels. So you see, if you click on download, you see it's going to say, do you want to replace that one? So I'm going to click download. And you can see that has been downloaded. So now what I'll do is I'm going to now switch from here and go back to Canva and go back to Canva. This is where I now bring in the image. So remember earlier on, I click plus and then I click image. And then now this image is going to pop up here. You can see the image right here, right? Now you can see the smaller image here and you can see the bigger image here. So this bigger image is what I'm going to click on here. And let's say I want to put it somewhere around here. And I can have it as big as this. So now this time around, you can see from here now, based on the principles of design, I am becoming the most important element. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to reduce my own image. I'm going to reduce it this way. So let me move it to this side. And then this mastering your emotion needs to be selected. So you can see something is clashing with each other. Now, this is the interesting thing with Canva. When you want to work on an image like that, or you want to work on some elements of your design, and it seems like you can't seem to click on that, what you simply need to do is to come to this button up here, these three buttons up here. If you click on it, it's called more, right? So once you click on it, you will see where you can actually adjust the um height or oh, no the layer you can what it does is you can use it to move the layer so now i'm going to move the layer downwards you can move it downward or you can move it upward upward downward depending on where you want to set so in this case let me click on this mastering you see that the mastering is still not easy to click so i'm going to still click on it again and then i'm going to send this picture downwards now you can see that mastering is now easier to click so that's exactly what you need to pay attention to now for colors, I'm going to come down here. Now you remember using adobe.color earlier on, I can pick colors, right? Now, off the top of my head now, I'm going to simply use a purple color around here. So actually the color is B1C, eight, um, let me see 850, it's not correct, that's the green. So I think it should be 810, b1 c this way that's not correct so i'm not correct so let me just cancel just just use the purple that i can see here but the purple has a lot of blue so let me move it up here okay good so this appears to be the color here now for this mastering your emotions you can see that already this is not going to work so let me then remove part of this text so let me remove part of this text so now it now needs to be just Master your emotions, or I can just delete it all together and recreate it. So here, then, so I say mastering your, then I recreate again, and then I type emotions. So you can see that these are now three different text. Now, so for this, I will need to bring it. I'll make it bigger. So you can see. So I'll need to make this bigger. Now, can you already see that? It seemed to be aligned. It seemed to be aligned. Now, you, this already, I may not need it again. So I can simply select this and then add your to the text. So it just makes it just one word. Now, it seemed to be clashing. So I'm going to move it back up here. So you can see this together right here. Can you see that? Now, I'm going to move this to the side. And then I'm also going to move this to the side. So if I click Mastering Your Emotions here, I can now bring this image. I can make it bigger if I want. And then I'll bring in icons here. So illustrations is what I'm going to do. And then I'm simply going to type, um, let's say, happy. Emoji is what is going to come out. So can you see different emojis showing up? Now, uh, of course, you already know that in Canva, if you see any icon with a crown, it means it's a paid it's a paid feature. So if you download it, it means you will have to pay for it. But in this case, now I'm going to download, let me see, let me use um, sad. Let me use sad. Let me see the kind of emoji is going to show me. I'm actually looking for an emoji. 
okay cool so you can see this is the exact emoji i used for that one so now i'm going to bring this down maybe to this place and then i'm going to reduce it and of course you can move it around so i just made a mistake now with canva you can click on do so you can click on do you see that did you see that now when you are working with images especially in canva you can't shift this way if you shift this way you are going to be cropping out your images and if you shift downwards too you are going to be cropping out your images can you see that so if you want to get your best quality of work all you do what you to do is you shift from the edge not from the top or from the bottom so now i'm going to delete that because it's already affected so i'm going to come back to illustrations i'm going to type sad again and then i'm going to choose the emoji back so so let me choose this one this time around and then you are going to simply stretch from the side way not from left and not from down so let me now adjust that so this up here so that's that you can see that it's lying the the layer it's uh, let me put it here you can see that the way it's layered now, let me reduce it a little and bring it. Okay, you can see that I've automatically, I've kind of tampered with how that is supposed to look. So now you can see it and then you bring it down. And then using this plus sign, that's what you use to move it around. So now I'm going to use this plus sign and then you can see it right there. Now I'm going to bring in another illustration. This time around, I want to bring... Um, smile or oh, no let me use laugh so let me use laugh you can see laughing emoji here and you simply drag it this way and using this plus you simply move it around again now you will observe that the icons are kind of layered on top of each other I'm doing that deliberately. If you choose emotions here and you click on these three icons, you can actually send it backward or you can send it forward depending on what you want to do. You can see I've sent it forward and I've taken it backward. I've sent it forward and I've taken it backward. So those are some of the things you need to pay attention to when you're working with Canva. Now, moving on, let me type the name of um, the date. So I'm going to use today's date. What is today's date? Today is April... 20th, 2020. Now, I don't want to use this color because it's going to become repetitive. So let me use a black color here. That's black color there. Now, I'm going to bring in zoom icon. So I'm going to come to images and then I'm going to click on gallery. And if you want to go fast to your gallery, simply click on this button here. Once you click on this button here, it allows you to quickly jump into your gallery and you can go pick whatever image it is you want to bring in. So what I'm looking for is Canva. So I'm going to come to downloads here and I'm going to check all of my, and I'm going to check all of my icons here. Okay, cool. So you can see this is Canva. So this is Canva from that side. So this is Canva now. And then observable is the fact that Canva has a background, right? It already has a white background. So next thing I need to do is to create the registration link. So now you would not observe that I'm using just two fonts, just one font so far. So sometimes working with a design, even with the use of one font can majorly create very beautiful designs for yourself. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the side of the screen. Let me... Let me create a new text. So here, I'm going to create a new text. And this time around, I want to type the name of where to register. So I'm going to write registration at, so I'm going to type www.dayosamuel.com forward slash mastery. Okay, so the sharing just got interrupted. I'm going to get back to that. So I'm going to get back to that. The... Okay, so I'm back. Now you observe that the text is being cut off. In this case, what you need to do is, so you see, 
is supposed to be mask tree. Now I'm going to select this. Now, first thing is you want to drop the text size so that everything is visible to your eyes. Then the next thing you want to do is I want to change the font. So let me look at this now. If this now this now looks okay, but if I make it bolder, okay. So you can see now, if I make it bolder, it, it still looks okay. But then I don't like to use now, and um, because I have set of fonts I usually like to use, I'm going to run straight to where that font is. Off the top of my head right now, I can't even remember the name, but there's a particular type of font. So I like this glacial indifference. It looks like the actual font I'm looking for. So now you can see, it looks like what I'm looking for. So I'm going to use that, and then I'm going to reduce the size. Now it looks like nobody can see what is there, right? This is where I now put up a shape. So now illustration, shape, and then I simply bring in a rectangle or a square, whichever of them shows up first. Okay, so this is a rectangle. Now, if I drag the rectangle here, you can see it's covering the entire screen. So what I will do is I'll click on this more button here and then I'll begin to take it down. You can see just one click of um, taking it down simply just moves it. So I'm going to bring this up a little and then I'm going to drop it down here. And then with this arrow, I'm going to move it here. And now I can stretch it to this side. Of course, it may have adjusted and become bigger. So I'm simply going to move it back. Now I'm going to change the color of this to the color I am using, but I'm going to make it darker. So you can see I'm making it darker. Now I'm going to select the text and now the text is going to be white. Why did I do that? To create contrast. Do you get that? To create contrast. Always remember that your contrast is very important in your design. Now for this here, this looks burst. This kind of looks jumbled up. Now what I'm going to do here is in order to, so I'm going to create uh, let me see, let me see. What do I have here that I need to create? Okay, so Saturday, every time and date. Okay, so in this case now, let me write time. So how did I create the time? I simply click shift and then I press this one, two, three again. I simply click on this one, two, three, shift, one, two, three. Okay, it seems not to be working. So let me go back. So I'm going to click on this again. Okay, now it's correct. So now it's correct. So, it's, so shift. So I first of all press. So what I do it is I first of I press space and then I press this shift. Okay, it looks like I'm not getting it. So with the way it is right now, this is the way the text is. So what I did is to click one, two, three first. Then I click on this button here. So with this button here, I can see extra characters. Now with this extra character, you can use this, or you can use this, or you can use this or you can use this to actually create the um, design elements for your, for your work. You can also use this as well. You can use this, but of course you can see that it's not looking very fine. What I would recommend you use is one, two, three. These are very, very good. You can see how they look. So with this, I'm simply going to type 4 p.m. 4 p.m. Now with 4 p.m. written here, you can see it looks like the font is not working fine again. So I'm going to change to global indifference now. And with this font, you can see everything looking fine. So now I'm going to now reduce this font here. I'm going to reduce it here. Now, sometimes when you are reducing and it doesn't seem to work, what you then need to do is to click on your font rather than the way it was just simply press enter. By pressing enter, you do what's called line break, and then you now adjust your text this way. So adjusting it this way, now I have this font here, and then I can move this picture here. Can you see that? So I can put this here, and then I can move this. Okay, I just made a mistake. So again, I'm going to correct that. Again, always remember your picture is very, very important. And so you can't just, so with this, I need to click bold so that it's readable. 
Now, what I also need to do is to add a shape behind this text. So how do I add the shape? Illustration shape. I'm wondering why it keeps loading like this every time. Well, I don't know. Now, I don't know what's going on. So since it's not seeming to work, what I'm going to simply do is I'm going to go and duplicate this shape here. So duplicate, I've duplicated it. Now I'm going to simply drag it out here and I'm going to press more and then send it backwards till I get what I am looking for. So remember that the idea of sending backward, can you see now? Can you see just tapping this button here, I'm able to separate them. So you can see that it's now sitting gladly behind the text here. Now for this, I'm going to select a yellow, or select a yellow, okay, I think this yellow is better. This yellow looks like the yellow from the icons, from the emojis. Now this zoom here, apparently, it appears to be like a black sheep. But of course, if you know how to use it very well, you can still make it work. So instead of just looking at it as a black sheep, what if you can place it on the white background so that when you have it here, it's looking very ugly. So what if you move it here and then or maybe you even type this and then just adjust this this way so that you have April 20th, 2020. Now for me, that's too much of, that's too much of palaver. So I'm simply going to click this. I'm going to return it back. And then I'm going to drop it on this. Now, last thing I need to add is a therapist guide. A, so a therapist, so I need to, a therapist. So first thing I need to change that font. That font looks to be clashing. So let me try global indifference again. Now notice that I've used two types of font already. I've used Glacial Indifference, I've used League Gothic. Now, what type of font can I use here that will still balance out the design? Let me try a, let me see if I can find a simpler font. Now, when you are doing your design, the idea of using font is you need to learn how to balance font. And when I say balancing font, when you use a straight font, you need to balance it with a round font. When you use a round font, you need to balance it with a straight font. When you use a cursive font, you need to balance it with another straight font. So I'm still trying to check for, but one cursive font I usually like to use is called permanent marker. That's a cursive font I like to use. I use it practically every now and then. So I'm going to click OK. OK, it looks like permanent marker is not identified here. So let me type and of Sean. Let me see, hand of Sean is not also here. Now, those are some fonts that I like to use a lot. Okay, so permanent marker is loaded, amazing, amazing. So now I'm going to write a, a therapist guide to emotional, emotional health. Thank you for suggesting all of that, my keyboard. So you can see it here. And now the purple seem to be plenty. So I'm going to change this purple to black. That way I've balanced out the colors just like that. So can you see how simple it is to create a design? All you need to do is to engage your mind and pay attention. You can see everything here right now. Look at how I created everything from scratch. This was the original design. Look at the one I created. You can see that this looks different from this. Now I've not added my logo, right? Can you see that I've not added my logo here, right? So let me now go and create my logo. So you come to image, then you go to your folder. Now I'm going to go to where, where can I find my logo? Okay, so you can see now I have my logo here. So this is Dyer Samuel Research Multiversity. Now, having brought down the logo to that size, I can move it up here. And again, can you see the design completed now? So I can move this down as well. I can even move it to a side. 
Now, another thing you need to be aware of is that you can always adjust how a photo looks. So if you click filter here, and you click advanced filters here. Now, I don't like to use all these filters here because they naturally look like um, Instagram <laughs> filters, but I like to create my own type. So if you come down here, if you scroll up, if you scroll up, you'll see the different things you can create. Now, if I want to turn that picture to black and white, what you need to do is to simply take out saturation, remove saturation completely. Can you see that? So what you, if you are, if you are creating a black and white version of this picture, what you simply need to do is to click on this saturation and bring it down. Can you see that's not to black and white, but then the black and white will not be sharp. So what you do then is to increase contrast. Can you see this now? So increasing contrast, can you see how I've simply just made it look bolder? Sometimes the contrast may not work depending on the type of picture you are adjusting. So what you do then is to check the blur, check the brightness, check the contrast, and then you now begin to drop the saturation gradually. Mm -hmm. So rather than move it once and for all, you simply drop it gradually. Now X process also has a way of adjusting color, picture colors. So you can see how it's adjusting the color of the picture. Now, since I'm looking for black and white effect, I can't get that from that. So I'm simply going to go back. Now I click undo. Undo just undoes or undid all the advanced filters. So now I'm going to click on this brightness, reduce it, and then contrast, increase contrast, and then saturation to be dropped. Saturation to be dropped. Now colorize means you can change the colors. As you can see here, you can actually blow a picture. So if you bring in a picture, you can actually blow it as well. So you can see this, is I'm making it sharper, sharper to the eyes, as you can see. And then X process, of course, that's the adjustment of the color. Vignette, now I'm not going to talk about vignette in this particular tutorial, but vignette is best used for your background. Now, based on what I have done here, once you are done adjusting your picture, simply click this, simply click that. And then once you are done, you are good to go. I, I don't want this background here, so I'm going to delete this page three, and then I have just two pages here. So you can see this is a design, and I can simply download. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to share in the group how I'm going, actually going to share this picture in the group and also tell you that this is the picture I was actually creating when I made this video. So with that, I want to say thank you very much for joining me here. It's been pretty interesting sharing this with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I believe that with this, I should be able to see you in the next lesson. I'm Dio Samuel, representing Audacity to Lead. Have yourself a wonderful time. So, enjoy yourself. <laughs> I hope this was helpful to you. If it's helpful to you, let me know in the comments, especially in the group.